as well as Thomas Gambino, the scion of the crime family. Faced with the prospect of a life in prison, and after learning that Gotti had badmouthed him, Gravano decided to cooperate with federal prosecutors and testify against his old boss. In fact, Gravano became an ally of Gotti late in the game, having earlier been more aligned with the wealthy and businesslike associates of Castellano than the blue-collar, thuggish Howard Beach clique Gotti represented. While most of Gotti's crew from Queens kept the faith and never turned on him, Gravano turned out to be a devastating witness against him. Sentenced to the rest of his life to the federal penitentiary in Marion, Illinois, Gotti found it increasingly difficult to run the Gambino family, forced as he was to rely on the haphazard visits of some lawyers and his family members to serve as conduits for communication. Gotti appointed his son, John A. Gotti, known as Junior, to the position of leadership in the hopes of keeping control. But that move only helped weaken Senior Gotti's position in that many in the crime family deeply resented the nepotism and believed, correctly as it turned out, that the son just didn't have the stomach or ability for the job. With federal prosecutors building upon their successes and fortified with a host of cooperating witnesses, the Gambino family underwent years of trials which weakened it considerably. Other crime families were also targeted and suffered, notably the Bonanno, Colombo, and Lucchese families. Ronald Goldstock, the former head of the New York State Organized Crime Task Force, once said that Gotti turned out to be a disaster for the mob, given the way he brought attention to the crime families by his flamboyance and in-your-face attitude towards police and the FBI, Goldstock's assessment seems on point. Gotti has been dead for close to two decades, and many books and countless articles have been written about him. Mob Star, the story of John Gotti, the most powerful criminal in America, and Gotti, both by Jerry Capisi and Gene Mustaine, were among the first to hit the market decades ago. Gangster, How the FBI Broke the Mob by Howard Blum and Underboss, Sammy the Bull Gravano story of Life in the Mafia by Peter Moss, largely dealt with the FBI investigation, which specifically targeted John Gotti through 1992. The latter tome, done with the collaboration of a well-known writer and expert on the mob, turned out to be an important work, and that Gravano's words fleshed out much of the story with inside information. In 2015, Gotti's son John authored an e-book with the foreword by Peter Lance titled Shadow of My Father, which explored the relationship between father and son in the mob world and delineates some of the history of the crime family. The film Gotti, inspired by Shadow of My Father, and starring John Travolta as Gotti, was released in 2018 after a private screening at the Cannes Film Festival. It received terrible reviews, vacillating as it did between being a gangster film and a hagiography about Gotti. Even Gotti's daughter, Victoria, penned This Family of Mine, what it was like growing up Gotti in 2009. A more critical assessment, Gotti Rules, the story of John Alight, Jr. Gotti, and the demise of the American Mafia, was written by veteran Mafia writer George Anastasia, with the assistance of one-time Gambino crime family associate and admitted murderer Alight. Gotti Rules attempted to knock down the Gotti mystique, showing how his hubris and greed led to his own downfall, a thesis which sparked a very public and acrimonious social media debate between Alight and Gotti's son John. So with so much already written about John J. Gotti, what more could another book reveal? Plenty, as it turns out. For a start, FBI archives about a variety of public figures, notorious or not, have become available since the 1990s. I discovered how useful those files could be while doing Top Hoodlum, Frank Costello, Prime Minister of the Mafia, which was published in 2018. The FBI materials dealing with Gotti proved useful in showing little-known details from his early life. He was a persistent draft delinquent, to fleshing out the inside story of how the FBI was able to zero in on he and his coterie of killers. As the 21st century turned, new Mafia trials detailed testimony about Gotti and his crew revealing details of the historical storyline which were unavailable to earlier writers about the mob. Once secret government files and documents were also made available to me and proved extremely helpful in seeing the interplay of events which brought about Gotti's demise. Reading through these materials, both new and old, it became clear that there was more to discover about the men who bonded with Gotti from the start of his career, killed for him and propelled him to the top of the Gambino family. Without this band of criminals, Gotti would have never made it to the top of organized crime. It was these men whose stories provide the spine of this book, Gotti's Boys, the mafia crew that killed for John Gotti. They were made men like Angela.